Welcome, my friends, to the Black Diamond for Monday, October 17th, 2016. John Lavinia is here with you live from Salt Lake City, Utah. As always, excited for a great Monday night session. We've got people piling in on this call. Welcome to all of you, those of you who I did not get a chance to welcome in person. So glad you're here. Looking forward to seeing everyone in person in just a few days in sunny Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, where, of course, we're gathering for our first ever Marketing Mastery event. Now, uh, it's a bit of a habit for me to announce that you can go ahead and get tickets in your Digital Altitude members site. But that is, in fact, not the case because they are sold out. So there's that. If you've got a ticket, clutch onto it with, you know, for dear life. Uh, we're getting together in just four days. But yes, the festivities begin on the 21st, which is this Friday. I'll be heading down uh, on the uh, Thursday, the 20th. Uh, as will my guest speaker, who's here with us tonight, who no one in this community has heard from before. Well, you may have heard uh, from her, but via other channels. She's never spoken on a digital altitude live training call before. But it's someone who you can probably guess who it is once I uh, give my little intro. It's someone who has done a whole lot, uh, not just here behind the scenes in the digital altitude community with putting together the event that we're all about to go to and assisting people and getting prepared for their presentations and such, uh, but also has done a lot for people inside the uh, home business and network marketing and online direct sales and, and this entire industry that we get to play in each day. Uh, so I'm really, really excited about what we've got uh, coming out tonight. Uh, before I get into that, though, I want to give my usual disclaimers. Since this is the Black Diamond Call, and we may have some new people joining us because it seems like every day, especially on days where we've got two calls in a day, there's always brand new people. So for our new people, here's what this call is about. You're going to hear my opinion on stuff, me, John Lavinia, how I work my businesses and how I've uh, progressed through the years, nearly 30 years of studying personal growth and success psychology and to the best of my ability applying principle-based uh, you know, ideas and practices into my life and into my business and what's uh, been able to earn me uh, a nice living and not have to work a job since 2002 when I found this industry. And uh, so you're going to hear my opinion on stuff and also my guest speaker. The, the rules are take what you like and leave the rest. This is like a buffet, right? So it's going to be very street, very raw. Uh, sometimes, as you, I think, heard last week, we also have, you know, very, um, you know, uh, very loose conversations. So none of this is pre-planned <laughs> or pre-scripted. Take what you like and leave the rest. And, of course, if I say anything that offends you, you'll get over it. That's just how we roll. We're here to help people become successful, not to sit and be comfy. We get to be comfy later. Okay, right now we're going to get to work and we're going to get the job done. And I would much rather have myself and my guest speakers tell you the way it is and help you succeed than, you know, be nice and fluffy and help everybody just kind of stay where they're at. So if you agree with that, you're in the right place. We have, we'd like to have a very direct conversation here. And the conversation we're going to be having today is about the only thing that we can seem to, to think about lately, which is events, which is the, the, Immersion, yes, the immersion in the environment of success, which I've talked about and, and mentored people for, for years talking about this one concept, this great accelerator, this thing that will accelerate your evolution into that successful person with the results you want and will do it faster than anything. Yes, the great accelerator is this, this concept, this principle-based action of immersing ourselves in an environment of success, which to an extent you're doing right now. Here, here we all are. We've showed up for the Black Diamond call, right? This is there, Look, there's a reason why we've got all these calls and why we do the trainings here live with the community, and there's a reason. It's, it's the same reason that separates digital altitude from all the other, the myriad of things that you could be doing with your time. There's no lack of opportunities out there in, in cyberspace, right? There's a million things people do, lots of distractions, lots of shiny objects, lots of uh, purported ways to, to make money and to earn a living online. There's something, as I think everyone here understands, though, that, that sets digital aptitude apart, and it is the people. Yes, it is the people. And I can tell you, my friends, every big breakthrough I've made in my life, every big leap, I'm not talking about a small incremental increase. I'm talking about exponential increases. Okay, these, these big leaps that I've made in my life, have always come through the catalyst of other people, another person, a mentor, a group. Right now, I'm not telling you that, that somebody else 
did it for me. No, that's impossible. No. But, but hearing the message, getting the perspective, uh, getting plugged in and, uh, as I already mentioned, accelerating my own evolutionary process by immersing myself in an environment where the success that I was seeking was not just a theory, but it was a reality. That has been catalytic for me to go from where I was at, and we may hear a bit about this tonight, when I got started, where I was at uh, mentally, emotionally, uh, physiologically, spiritually, etc., where I was at to where I was able to get uh, so far, so far, because I've not arrived, I'm not done, right? Is anybody here done? Is anybody here arrived? Let me know if you're levitating or if you're manifesting fish and loaves, then you can give me advice. You can be the, you know, the guest speaker on the call next week. Um, but I have not, right? I've not arrived. And so my, my message to everyone is, uh, and I've said this again several times, I believe that anyone here, anyone who's got the motivation to be in a community like this, to participate in a business such as this, to, to sort of take the gloves off and really get to work, I believe that anyone who truly desires it can earn a tremendous income, can make a million dollars. Sure, you make more than that. We've seen people make more than that, way, way more than that in this industry. I've made way more than that in this industry. Michael Force, who put this whole program together, has made way more than that. Okay, so yes, I believe anyone can make a million dollars. If that's what you truly want, you could do even greater things. That's not a problem. The only question is, how long is that going to take? How long does it take to make a million dollars? How long does it take to get to where you want to be, to become the person you truly know you want to become and that you deserve to become? How long does that take? Does it take a lifetime? Well, for some people, maybe two lifetimes. I don't know. Does it take uh, a year, a couple years? Does it take uh, a couple months? My goodness, there are people that make a million dollars in a month, a million dollars in a week, right? So we're, we're somewhere, uh, relatively speaking, we're somewhere along this, this road of, of uh, greater effectiveness and, and you know, evolving our own ability to get what we want. I just want to help accelerate that process, and I know that on that same page with me is my co-host tonight, someone who I've known for longer than I've been successful in this industry. Yes, we're going back, way back, and I can tell you that, uh, as, as many of you have listened to the archives of, of the Black Diamond Calls, you know that we've had uh, Dave Kozak out here, who's a real fun guy. He had a great talk. And then uh, Ty Coughlin, uh, who uh, everybody uh, heard that call. Here's the guy who uh, says that I was his first coach, right, way back in the day, 2002. Well, here's someone I've known even longer than that, uh, and it's someone who followed me into this industry when she was not even even remotely close to being, uh, you know, a, a participant, a risk taker, a um, uh, an entrepreneur, a salesperson. Yes, a salesperson. Ooh, that's scary, right? Here's somebody who was a high school teacher who somehow I convinced to marry me, the sales guy, <laughs> and now a leader among leaders here in the direct selling world. Of course, I'm talking about my wife, Shannon Lavinia. Shannon, welcome to the Digital Altitude live training call series and specifically the top of the mountain, the black diamond. We're talking about creating this, this process, accelerating this process and having people get to where they want to go through the power of the group, the community, the events, the culture, the things that are happening here, which we don't take for granted, you and I, do we? No, we don't. We know how valuable this is. Shannon, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you for, for opening commentary. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's it's always nice to get on a call and have somebody say such wonderful things about you, but it's even better when it's your husband. <laughs> mm. Yes. Um, well, hello, everybody. Uh, this is Shannon Lavinia, the sometimes referred to as better half. Uh, definitely not the more organized half, but I am excited to be here with all of you tonight um, and to talk about this upcoming event and share a little bit about my story and also why I'm so excited for you with this event and how you can get the most out of it. Um, so as John said, uh, I was not entrepreneurial at all, although I did get an early start in marketing because uh, I did place the personal ad back in 1997 that captured John's attention. So I did have an early start in the marketing, and uh, I would say that that converted pretty well. Uh, my, my first ever online ad, back when people thought that uh, online dating was a bit psycho. So 
Um, here with Digital Altitude, um, I am actually the show coordinator. So I'm the person who is uh, curating all of the speakers' content, aligning them into the show. And one of the reasons that I wanted to come out on this call tonight is because I'm so fired up after speaking with the speakers, getting their slides, seeing their assets, seeing what they're going to be talking about, and just knowing how absolutely epic this is going to be for you and the transformation that you're going to experience in your business. And to put this in context, I'm just going to share with you uh, my story and how I got started in the industry and the impact that events had on my life and my business. Um, so back in 2002, John and I got married. Uh, April 28th of 2002, so you can do the math on that. We've been together a long time. And um, the weekend that we got married, it, we found it a little odd that his uh, general manager and his managers at the car dealership where he was working did not come to our wedding. And we knew all of them. We were, we were friends with all of them, and nobody showed up. And as it goes, I was a high school teacher. I taught high school biology. I made a whopping $26,000 a year, worked like a dog, 60-hour uh, work week, sometimes 70, you know, grading papers at night, doing lesson plans, all that great stuff that teachers get to do. Um, and uh, neither one of us could get a honeymoon, obviously. Uh, so John was in the car business, which is Bell to Bell, and I was a teacher. So we both went back to work on Monday. And Monday morning, John walked into his job, and his office as a sales manager had been converted into four cubicles. And all of his stuff was in a box, and he was basically given no, like, no job title. He wasn't fired. Uh, he just was left to wander the dealership, kind of trying to figure out what he was supposed to do. And uh, at in April, I was just finishing up my school year at the middle of May, and normally I would work uh, extra during the, the school year and save up so I could take a trip over the summer or something like that. But we invested in our wedding and, and did that kind of stuff. So um, a few weeks later, John still had no job title. Uh, he had a huge pay cut, and he was making about 40 to 50% less. And there were all these promises of what he was going to uh, be getting at his job. And for those of you who have experienced the outsource or downsize or just your company imploding and you ending up without a job where you thought you had this security, like you were walking in every day to build somebody else's dream and putting your heart and your soul in it and trying to do a good job, and then really to recognize that there was no appreciation, there was no security, and at the end of the day, nobody really gave a darn about you. You know, there it's very disparaging and disappointing. Um, and it, it does take away your sense of security, right? Because you've put all of your eggs in somebody else's basket, and basically somebody stomped on them. So in July, John came home on a Friday, or June. John came home on a Friday, looked like death, literally, um, laid down on the couch and didn't get up for the whole weekend. And I, it was really terrifying. Here we were newlyweds. I was 28. He was 31. And he was sicker than any person I had ever seen. So I called my doctor on Monday and said, you know, I really don't know what to do with this. And he said, look, either tell him he gets in the car to go to the hospital or you call 911. So we get to the hospital and John starts convulsing. Uh, they're in the hospital, right? And uh, shortly after, the doctor came out to talk to me because, of course, I'm the wife. And uh, he came out very somber and serious. And he said, look, your husband has a stress-induced condition. And if he doesn't change his life, this will kill him within five years. And that was us two months into our marriage. So, you know, when we got home from that, I said, look, babe, we – we have to make a change. Like, I don't know what we're going to do, but something has to change. And we had a mortgage. We had a new car. We had debt from our wedding. Um, and we really didn't know what we were going to do. Um, but then shortly after, John got a flyer on his car. And it was this little yellow flyer. And um, to tell the truth, and I'll just speak for him, he was kind of pissed off that somebody littered on his car. 
And he wasn't going to throw it on the ground because that's definitely not my husband. <laughs> so, you know, he looked at it, and on the bottom of the card it said, I hope you love what you do for a living because you'll probably be doing it forever. And it, it said if you don't call, right, if you don't call, I hope you love what you do for a living because you'll probably be doing it forever. So, of course, John called, and the guy who answered on the other end of the line was a guy making $40,000 a month in direct sales. So John listened. Uh, he came to me. We got started in that opportunity. It was 1500 bucks. We pulled together every penny we could, and we got started. Then we found out that they were going to be having an event, and all of these leaders were going to be there, and so was Bob Proctor, who was one of our, like, all-time, all-time highest of high mentors, right? Uh, the uh, uh, He... Uh, teaches all about uh, Napoleon Hill thinking we're rich and I mean just somebody that we really admired and looked up to and we had studied before so we thought okay we have to get to this event but the biggest challenge was here we were in debt I was barely making enough money I mean literally in the state of Arizona I qualified for food stamps and clinic care with my salary so as a teacher which you know it doesn't make any sense um, but we decided we were going to have to get to this event. That event was $8,000, and we had no idea who we were going to do it, so I just basically went to work and said, you know what, we have to be there, and we figured it out. Uh, miracles happened. We had this empowering intention. Uh, there was going to be a black tie event. I went and bought something off the clearance rack from Macy's, right, this red gown that was like 20 bucks. And we got to the event, we had $100 to our name in the Bahamas, literally. All the cards maxed out. Uh, we had $100 cash, $15 of which had to cover the exit tax coming out of the Bahamas. So we're like, okay, we have $85 here. And what we did was we did everything possible to make this event our event. And we went there with such incredible intention. We, we sat down with leaders. We asked questions. We had goals that we wanted to come away from the event with. Um, it worked out that we actually got to have dinner with Bob Proctor. Uh, we, that's where we sat down with Jason and Tanya Howell, uh, who, are, who are also here with Digital Aptitude. If you don't know them, they're amazing people. Um, but we sat down to them. We went to breakfast one morning because it was the one meal not covered by the event. At the time, this was a three-day event at the Atlantis Resort in the Bahamas, which is outrageously luxurious and, and everything else. And we go to breakfast, and it's $35 a person. So I'm like, you know, I, I guess this is what we're going to do. So we spend 70 of our $85 on breakfast. And Jason and Tanya were in the same situation. We're sitting there having breakfast. We're laughing hysterical about this because the absurdity of the fact that we only, you know, as adults, only have $100 and we just spend 70 of it on breakfast. Fortunately, it was a buffet, and I will tell you, I literally ate like a pig. I ate as much as I possibly could at that event, uh, at that breakfast, because I was like, I'm going to get my $35 worth here. <laughs> and... Uh, and we committed, uh, Jason and Tanya, John and I committed that at the next event, we were going to walk in as leaders. And we left that event with that intention and that commitment. Now, up to that event, we hadn't really had any success um, in the company. And we were frustrated. We had been there about two and a half months. Um, I, we were, I was walking parking lots, putting out flyers in July in Arizona. You know, we put out 5,000 flyers, and we were, we were really, really motivated. But a little bit before we went to this event, we were starting to have those little tiny thoughts of self-doubt, right? But at the same time, my why was huge because it was do or die, right? My husband could not keep working in the car business. The doctor told me it was killing him. I never in a million years wanted to see my husband so beaten up and deflated and just burnt out and frustrated and feeling like nobody cared about his effort and work ethic and, and his smarts and his abilities. So it was like we had to make this work. This was it. And we went to that event and we came out of the event with that intention 
and uh, that month we cracked twenty thousand dollars in a month. The following month we doubled that over forty thousand, and a few short months later, our seventh month in the business, we did one hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars in a single month. Became the top earners in the company, held that spot for seven years, and made millions of dollars. I mean, completely transformed our lives. On October 31st of 2002, John and I both walked into our jobs and resigned. And everybody was shocked. Now, I was in a teacher community, so you can imagine, they thought I had literally gone nuts, like insane nuts. And they mocked me during the rest of the time that I was there. They were like, oh, you think you're going to be rich, blah, 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 you know. And then I rolled up in a Lexus GX. And on the day I was quitting, that was it. I was gone. And the next time they saw me was at my one of the students' graduation that the parents invited me, and I rolled up in a Beamer convertible. I was living in a multi-million dollar home. And, you know, these people who mocked me then realized, look, who's the fool, right? So that event was the epic life-changing moment for me. I did not come from wealth. I did not come from accomplished people. The backstory to me is I was an orphan. My mom was an alcoholic. She died when I was seven. I lived in a lot of poverty. Um, and when I was, the day I turned 18, I left. I just said, I'm out of here. I have to go to college. I don't know why I thought that. But to me, that was my way out of the poverty and the trailer park lifestyle. And, you know, so I, I got into a college. I worked three jobs. I put myself through college. And I became a teacher. And I thought that that was going to be, like, my dream, right? Like, I'm going to be a teacher and I'm going to live this great lifestyle until I realized that teachers work really hard and don't make any money and it was practically impossible to survive. And the teachers who were flourishing were married to, like, doctors and lawyers and, and other stuff um, or they were two teacher families barely getting by. So when I saw an opportunity to make 20000 or 40000 or $100,000 a month, I was like, you know what? I'm willing to work harder than I worked to put myself through college. If I could get myself through college despite all the odds against me, the first person ever in my family to graduate college, practically one of the fewest people to even graduate high school or not have kids by the time I was 16, then I could definitely do what these other people were doing. And when I went to that event, I looked at these people up and down, all these leaders, right? I looked them up and down. I was like, you know what? Nothing special about that person. Nothing special about that person. Nothing special about that person that I can't do too. And when I put myself on the same level as them, like things just changed. My world turned upside down. I was able to... Um, I was able to volunteer more. I was able to give back more. You know, um, John and I donate hundreds of thousands of dollars to charities. I never would have been able to do that as a teacher. Um, I wouldn't have been able to help other people realize their goals and achieve their successes. So going to this event is going to be an epic life changer for you if you want it to be. And I'm going to give you guys a couple of things that I do at every event that I go to. I go to tons of events every year. Um, one, I love to travel. So anytime there's an event, I'm like, I'm there. Um, and I love people and I love to meet people. And I'm going to give you some strategies on how you can make this event really, really extraordinary. Before that, I want to tell you what you're going to be getting at this event. And I'm not going to give too much away because I want it to be a you know, a surprise for you too. So I'm just going to give you, you know, my daughter just had her sixth birthday on Saturday and I think we kind of over tormented her with the ideas of what her presents were going to be. So I'm going to tease you guys a little bit about what the content's going to be. But um, I want to let you know that there's, n there's, a, there's one question that almost every single person asks me um, when they start an online business. There's this one nagging question that they'll always ask, and that is going to be answered for you. I'm not going to tell you what the question is, but I will tell you that you are going to get the answer. I'm also going to tell you that there's one thing that is common amongst every single person who is successful in this industry, one common 
thread. And you're going to discover that at this event too. And the best part of that is it's so easy for you to duplicate. And once you get that, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, it's that simple. Um, you're also going to get some tech training. And a lot of times when we start new in an industry, and I'm going to tell you my tech story here. Um, when we start new in tech stuff, you're learning a lot. Now, remember, I was a high school teacher, right? And it's one of the reasons that um, they brought me in to do the content for the show, because I'm really good at aligning content in a way that you can take it away and use it. Um, so it's not going to be overwhelming. It's not going to be too much. And you're going to get actual strategies that you will get in check sheets, action guides, that you can walk out of the event, pull out your action guide, go down the steps, and do it. Um, but when it comes to tech stuff, a lot of times people will get very uh, confused, scared, overwhelmed. I don't know if any of you have had that experience. Uh, you can raise your hand. I can't see you, but you can put your hand up there, right? Um, I did too when I started in this industry. Now, when I got started back in 2002, nobody was really doing online marketing. Uh, we did a lot of offline marketing, newspaper ads, flyers, live meetings, stuff like that. And while all that stuff is great, it's very time consuming. Um, and it takes more effort to get a lot of the duplication. So when, we, when I started online, Jason Howell is actually the reason I started online. He and I were in a conversation, and I had a question for him, and he said, Google it. And I was like, what? And, and he said, Google it. And I said, like, what are you talking about? I don't get, like, I don't get what you're saying. And he's like, Google. So he actually had me go online, type in Google.com, and I discovered Google for the first time, thanks to Jason Howell. Maybe they'll pay him a commission. I don't know. I've probably spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in advertising with them. Um, but he said, Google it. So I Googled it, and on the right-hand side, there were little ads, and at the bottom it said, Advertise with us. So I clicked on that. I read the tutorials. Then I typed into Google, how do I get a website? And up popped some company that did replicated websites. So I got a website, and I placed my first ad. And my first week, I got like 300 leads. And that was it. I didn't do flyers. I did not do meetings. I did not do newspaper ads. I built a multi-million dollar enterprise doing Google AdWords. Um, and that was um, how I got started in online marketing. Now, I did not know a lot of tech stuff, so I basically just used what there was that was the least techy. And you're going to learn how to do that at this event. You're going to learn some of the really easy tools that you can use to build an online business without having to be a programmer or a coder or you know build complex websites or funnels or any of that. Right? So we're going to show you the really easy tools that you can use to duplicate what a lot of the leaders are doing. Um, and there's going to be some super cool, cool announcements about that as well. Um, you're also going to get some awesome training on video marketing. Now, video marketing is the highest converting form of marketing, so we want to make sure that you guys can use it, use it effectively, and do it really easily. So you're going to get some awesome training on that, plus how to get eyeballs on your videos and how to actually um, convert those eyeballs into leads. Right, So how to get people looking at your video and then how to get that person to actually opt into your list so that now they're a lead. And hopefully you guys are excited already because there's actually more. Um, you're going to be getting free Facebook advertising strategies that one of the leaders who's going to be teaching them used to make six figures in six months uh, with no real previous experience in that. So she's going to be teaching you really, really easy strategies that anybody can do. And then also the don'ts on Facebook so that you're not repelling people. Um, and that's important too because you want to make sure that you're like engaging and building relationships and stuff like that. So there's going to be such incredible content. Plus, you're going to get to hear from Michael Force, our leader, uh, many times during this event who's going to be sharing the inspiration for DA and some other really, really cool announcements that you're going to be privileged to hear because you're going to be there. Um, 
And you're going to get to meet the leaders, see the leaders, hear from the leaders, network with other people in DA, and walk away from this event with actionable strategies and tools that you can apply to really launch your business into a whole nother orbit. Okay. So are you guys ready? I'm going to give you, grab a pen and paper, because I'm going to give you my strategy for getting the most out of every single event. And these tips, if you apply them, you're just going to rock the event. And some of them are, are kind of silly, but they make a big difference, OK, to you. <laughs> OK, so number one, decide what you want to get from the event. It's super important to have a goal going into the event so that you don't get overly dispersed on a lot of different things and you, you put your attention on focus on what you want to get. And the what you want to get can be different for all the thousands of people that are in the room. But find out and really dial in what you want to get from this event and make it your goal to get that. You're the person responsible for getting it. Right? So you're the person who says, this is what I'm going to get, and I'm going to get it. It's just like if you go to the grocery store and you're going for milk, it's your job to get the milk, check out, and leave. Right? So it's the same thing with the event. You want to you want to get what you went there for. Number two, you want to make every effort to connect with leaders. One of the um, mistakes that a lot of people make is they will put leaders on a pedestal. And it's easy for us as leaders to assume that, pe that pedestal position, right? Because we are accomplished, and we have done a lot, and we do speak from experience and authority. So sometimes it's easy for us to um, assume that position if people put us there. But really, you want to understand that we all started in similar places, right? Some people started with nothing, some people started with language barriers, some people started just coming to the US with a couple bucks in their pocket, right? And they have these amazing stories because they're doing what I'm telling you to do, and they've done it. So you want to understand that these are people just like you and relate to them on that level. The other thing is, when I went to my first event, I walked in as though I was a leader. I put myself in that position. And sometimes when um, I'm coaching uh, people in network marketing, one of the things that we'll get coached on is the question, well, how much money have you made? And they'll say, you know, people are asking me this all the time. And I'm like, that's interesting, because nobody ever asked me that question. And they're like, yeah, because you've made a lot of money. I'm like, well, how would they know how much money I've made? They don't, they, I mean, I don't give them the password to my bank account. Um, I don't drive a fancy car. I drive a Dodge, you know. So how would they know that I've made millions in this industry? You know, I'm not a flashy person. I'm not walking around with Louis Vuitton bags and stuff. Um, so the only way that they know I've made a lot of money is because I present myself with a lot of confidence that I've made a lot of money. <laughs> and I've done that from the beginning. I've carried myself with a lot of confidence. I'm just going to take a sip of water here, so I'm not going anywhere. And um, this is something that I learned early on. Um, so understand, I grew up in a lot of poverty and a lot of abuse and a lot of, you know, not a, not a good environment. So the way that I got people to assist me was to just have a smile on my face and hold my head high. And I would ask people for jobs. I would ask them if I could do things for them. I would ask them for help when I was, went out on my own when I was 18, I would ask people if I could stay with them in exchange for me doing housework or babysitting or whatever. But I always did it with an air of confidence. I never did it from a position of being needy, even though I was. I needed something, right? I just carried myself with a lot of confidence. It helped me get better paying jobs. It helped me get into college. I mean, y you have to understand, I got expelled from high school for truancy because I had to work. So, I mean, I fortunately was able to graduate after that, but my grades were not good. So the fact that I even got into a college, an all-girls Catholic college, uh, that I went to and presented myself to, 
uh, accepted me was a miracle. The community college turned me down. That's how bad my records were. So I got into college, right, not because I had great grades or great parents or a lot of money to pay tuition. I got into college because I walked in and said, I really want to go to college. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Just tell me what to do. And they were like, do you, you know, and that was it. And that's how I got into college. Um, so it's carrying yourself with confidence and presenting yourself like you're already successful is a key to success. It's the be, do, have principle. You have to be it first, do the things a leader would do, and then you'll have the results a leader would have. So the, what, I'm, what I'm telling you is walk into that event like you're a leader and connect with the other leaders. Right? Don't put them up on a pedestal. Just treat them like normal people and take the information they're giving you and use it. Um, number three, when you're at the event, take care of yourself. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of parenting here. <laughs> so for those of you who are like, Vegas, woo, we're going to Vegas. Okay, go to Vegas after the event, right? Spend a couple extra days, get your drinking on, like do whatever you want to do in Vegas. While you are at the event, the best thing you can do to get the most from this event is take care of yourself. Trust me, I have done the event where I've shown up with a hangover and all you end up with is with a headache, not getting in the information, and regrets. So when you're at the event, do your best to feed yourself well, uh, hydrate, lots of water. Your brain needs water in order to function properly. Uh, take your vitamins. Get some exercise, go for a walk, you know, do whatever you can. Get good sleep, right? A tired brain is not a functioning brain. So if you want to get the information from the event, get good sleep. I know it's Vegas, you want to stay up late, but even if you go to bed at midnight and get up at 7, you still got in 7 hours, right? Um, and then when you're in the room, bring a sweater. Who knows how cold it's going to be? Dress in layers. And the reason I tell you that is because a lot of times people will be like, I'm freezing in here. And then all their attention goes to, I'm freezing. And that's all they can focus on is physically what they're experiencing, right? So do your best to really prepare yourself to physically be optimal at the event. It's going to help you to absorb the information, give your complete attention, and be able to take this training and run with it. Um, okay, number, th number four, um, network and connect. So when you go to this event, you want to do your best to meet as many people as possible. You never know who's going to be a great ally to you as you're building your business and who you can turn to for advice, who's going to support you. You may gain some accountability partners. Um, you might find someone that you can partner up with, like maybe you're good at video and they're good at websites, or maybe you're good at writing emails and they're really good at organizing. You know, you just never know who it is that you're going to meet. So going up to your room and hanging out by yourself is like, why, you know, why do it? Just do your best, stay in the lobby, walk up to people, give them a handshake, introduce yourself, find out who they are, ask questions. When I meet someone new, I just ask them as many questions as I possibly can to learn about them, right? And then while I'm learning about them, um, I'm finding out, you know, how is this person really going to fit into my circle of influence? Right? How are they, how can I assist them? How can they assist me? How does this work? Um, I've built a, a six-figure consultancy business just by introducing myself to people and finding out, and almost always they'll tell me about some problem they have, and I'm like, oh, well, what solutions have you looked at? And they'll tell me, and I'll say, okay, well, are, we, are you open to other solutions? And they'll say yes, and I'll say, great, let's set up a meeting. And that's it. You know, next thing I know, they're signing a $10,000 contract. And it's just because I, I introduce myself to people and I ask questions. So take time to network and really connect. The other thing that you can do is you can walk around and ask people what they got from the last speaker or what the most, um, what the most impactful thing they just learned is. And a lot of times, you will learn something that you might have missed or you didn't hear or you're getting a whole other perspective and you're like, wow, I didn't even hear, you know, like I didn't even hear that and this person is so excited about it and now you're walking away with even more training. 
Um, number five, stay in the room and be prompt. <laughs> so this is something I tell everybody because once I left the room um, and I, you know, I got a text that someone needed to talk and I left the room with a phone call and there was an epic experience that happened in the room that I missed out on. And again, I regretted it, right? I was like, oh, why did I do that? And everybody, you know, then the break was after and everyone was talking about it and I was like out there and I was like, oh my gosh, I missed it. Um, so do your best to stay in the room. You're there to get the content. So turn your phone off, get your pen out, you know, get your thinking cap on and just get everything you can possibly get them from this event. I'm telling you, just going through these speaker slides and the content, I have already learned like epic business changing information for me. And I have been doing this for 14 years. So what you're going to get is has the potential to make you millions. Disclaimer, 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 right? You're not going, I'm not saying you will make millions, but I'm saying it has the potential. This training, this is some of the training that I've gotten that I apply that has made me ridiculous amounts of money. Um, so get everything that you can possibly get. Be prompt. Show up in the morning. Don't be late. The other thing is it's also, um, it's also disrespectful to the speakers, right? They're there for you. They've put a ton of time and effort into putting this content together for you. So be there when they're starting. Um, and then the last tip I have for you is apply the content. So what I do after an event is the day after I come home, I take out all of my notes, I organize them, and then I put them into a strategy implementation plan. So I'll look at what it is that I want to implement, and then I start to schedule it out and start putting it to work. And if you do that, then you're going to start getting this training working for you. And I start with one strategy at a time, and then I put that it to work, I get it working to a winning um, result, then I will implement a second strategy. Then I get that working to a winning result. Then I will implement a third strategy. And that's how you avoid overwhelm. So you're going to get a lot of training at this event. When you come home, you want to pick one thing that you're going to run with, run with it, then pick a second thing, run with that, then pick a third thing, run with that, right? And if you do this, you're it, I mean, literally who you walk in as on Friday is going to be very different than who you walk out with, than who you walk out as on Sunday night. When I walked into my first event, I was doubtful. Um, I really uh, had questions about my own ability to be as successful as I could. Um, I walked in with a lot of confidence, but behind that smiling face and, and um, confident look was my own self-doubt. I really doubt it. I mean, I, the most I had made in a year was about $40,000. And I worked really hard for it, and I thought that I could only make money with the education I had, right? Like I got a teaching degree and a biology degree, and that's what I have to lean on to make money with. And when I walked out of that event, I knew that I could learn anything at any time that I ever wanted to learn, and I could turn it into an income stream. And in the last 14 years, I have made money selling courses. I have made money coaching. I have made money consulting. I have made money in network marketing. I have made money in direct sales. I, and a lot of times, I make money in affiliate marketing. And if I want to make money with something, I just spend a couple of days learning it, then I spend a couple of days applying it, and then I, I'm making money. And that's the type of confidence and know-how that you're going to gain at this event. And you're going to then be able to move through all the DA products, the, the coaching, and know that you have everything you could possibly need or want to be outrageously successful as successful as the guys and gals that you're going to be hearing from on stage who all came from places of desperation, struggle, self-doubt, worry, frustration, and then catapulted into superstardom, making high six figures, seven figures a year, and you will have everything that you need to do as great as they are or even better. 
So, John, that's what I have for tonight, and I will put it back into your hands. <laughs> wow. You know what, Shannon? So many great tips, and I, I am seeing uh, feedback in the chat roll. I don't know if you're, you're looking at the, uh, the console, but a lot of excited people. Looking forward to meeting everyone at the event, uh, of course, just on Friday. By the way, I do want to make a, a little premature announcement and offer one correction to what Shannon was saying. So get ready, Shannon. Here comes a correction. What? Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, There's always an opportunity for you to correct me. Yeah, I will say, wait, I have to say this. You know, uh, John is definitely the brilliant one in this partnership. I, I'm the one that gets things done, and it's not always done 100% correct, but it gets done, and then I make money with it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Okay, so first the announcement. Okay, well, Shannon just gave you an announcement and that's, that I'm brilliant. So thank you for that announcement, Shannon. So uh, second announcement is that on Friday morning, you guys know we've got the um, Inside Digital Altitude call that happens on Fridays. I'm looking to orchestrate a live from the lobby at the Red Rock version of the Inside Digital Altitude call, and we'll probably do a live video stream as well uh, it's going to be cool. So for anyone coming in on Thursday, we're going to set up some sort of a communication mechanism or Skype group or something where uh, we can all get together in the lobby on Friday morning. Yes, at 6 o'clock in the morning. No, 7 o'clock in the morning Pacific time so we can do this live. And I'm going to have to consult with uh, our friend Ryan Thomas on that too. But that's just another little thing that we can only do at a live location, right? We can't do that. We can't orchestrate that. Uh, you know, just from week to week, right? So this is a very special time. Second thing is a correction for Shannon. She says she does not uh, have a nice Louis Vuitton handbag. However, Shannon, you do have, what are these other ones? Jimmy Choo and uh, uh, Prada and all this, right? I mean, you've got some nice bling too. So Yeah, but you couldn't say that I'm a flashy person. Well, no, here's the thing. <laughs> I just I wanted to uh, to throw that out that, that that Shannon has, in addition to you know whatever bling she chooses or chooses not to, uh, you know have uh, in her attire, she you can just hear when you when you hear Shannon you can hear that certainty. Did it, did everybody hear that from Shannon as she was talking here? Now she was talking with you about two things that I got from your your talk here tonight, Shannon. Number one is the concept upon which all of this is built. In other words, you told the story about when we got our start, you know, here in the direct sales world and, you know, scraping together pennies to eat breakfast and, you know, putting thousands of dollars on the table to go to our first event and we didn't know anybody. We walked in as newbies, right, and we met these other, these other clowns, right, Jason and Tanya, right, and here we are years and years and years later, toppers in the industry and, you know, leaders in, in this whole space that at that time, here's the point, at that time, could you have pictured this? Well. Yes, to an extent, we did picture it, and it's, that's why we're experiencing it, right? It wasn't like a big surprise that we're top earners, right? That was all premeditated. That was part of the plan. That's why we showed up, you know? So everybody grasped that, and because, you know, time has gone on, and because there's been progress and evolution, and now here's this uh, digital altitude thing that this guy Michael put together, we get to go even faster. You, my friends, get to go even faster faster. And of course, with this, uh, this marketing mastery event, it's pennies. Pennies, right? So spectacular stuff. Now, we get to the event itself. Shannon gave you a bunch of tips on how to participate. Uh, one thing, Shannon, did you mention bring an extra battery? Did you mention that part? I did not mention uh -huh. that part because you usually bring my extra battery. Right. So <laughs> here's, here's a tip for everyone. Have an extra battery to charge your phone. I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago. And make sure that the battery itself is charged, right? So that's the part that I help Shannon with. She's got the battery. I bought her that. Uh, <laughs> but it doesn't help if it's dead in her purse. <laughs> in, in my Prada purse. <laughs> you know, you purse. Actually, you got some really nice purses. So everybody's going to be looking for your purses now and see, oh, what purse is she wearing? So um, anyway. That's great. I'm going to have to go to Kmart and buy some purses. <laughs> oh, okay. Is Kmart even still in business? I don't know. Retail has been a rough, rough uh, world lately. But uh, here's what we're going to do, Shannon. We're going to open up the, um, the call for a couple of questions, right? We're already 50 minutes in. 
so a couple of questions. Uh, here's how we roll on this. We, we keep it on topic and we do our best to share the time. So if you've got a tech support question or if you need to contact your coach or if you need to click on you know, the help button inside your digital aptitude uh, you know, members site, uh, that's not for this call. So this call, we're talking about the power of events and that transformation that happens. And then, of course, if you've got a logistical question about the event itself, uh, you, you, I suppose you could ask Shannon on that. Uh, but we definitely want to keep it on topic. And I'm going to go ahead and get the Q&A going here in a moment. Hold on just one second. Okay, we have engaged Q&A, Shannon. So here's what's going to happen, everybody. If you want to ask a question, you can press star six, or if you're on the app, you can press your, your mute or unmute button, and that should raise your hand. So again, star six is the command if you want to talk to Shannon live, live on the air. Star six is the command, and then uh, we do have a couple takers here, so we're going to go to our first caller. Here we go. Hold on a second. And I do see that uh, 570 area code. You can go ahead and unmute your line. You're live on the air. Who's that? It's Joyce DeBoer. Hey, Joyce, where are you calling from? I'm from Pennsylvania, Wellsboro, jo Pennsylvania. All right, Joyce in Pennsylvania. What's your question? I got to know what, what days are, are you going to be there? Uh, well, we start on Friday, so four days from now, Friday. and we end on oh. Sunday. So that is okay. the agenda, 21st through 23rd. But of course, tickets are sold out. So Joyce, if you can, uh, if you already got a ticket, we will see you there on Friday. Uh, otherwise, uh, mm -hmm. we're going to be making some other provisions for latecomers. So uh, does that help, Joyce? Yes, it does. All right, fantastic. Well, thanks again. Glad you're here. Let's go to our next caller, which is, uh, I believe, 503 area code. Who's that? Benita. Hey, Benita, where are you from? I'm from Oregon. Great. Benita from Oregon. You're live on the air. Yes. So I have a question from you. I've been told by um, last week, like, if you join this the conference, you're going to be getting a lot of experience. I joined this conference last week. I was holding, like, two hours. There was no response. I don't know what was going on. Then I went to sleep. I'm like, I don't think there's anything going on. They are not even working today, it seems like. And then today I had got again message like, hey, Benita, you wanted to join this conference today? I'm like, okay, I will do that. And then I started getting into this, and finally I get the chance to talk to you, and Shannon and you were talking about this. So I only have a question, like, um, if we are listening to you and, and getting the ideas how this is going to be working, um, I mean, is it like uh, we're going to get paid for just for listening to the conference or we are learning from you? What is the okay, it sounds like Benita's question is, are you getting paid to listen to this conference call? Yes. Great question. The answer is a resounding no, nor do I get paid for hosting it. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> great question. No one's ever asked no, you that before. So that's, 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 that's a great question. We are putting up time and listening and time to know what's going on. I even put down something like this. So we need to know. I don't know. I'm still learning, you know, where I'm training. I'm going to know, right? There you go. All right. Well, I'll tell you what you do get paid for, Benita. You get paid for marketing. You get paid for bringing in sales of our products, which are vast. We've got a vast product line. It sounds like you're just uh, learning your way around here. Hey, stick with your coach, Benita. You're going to do just fine. And definitely have that expectant attitude that you should get paid. Fantastic. Uh, very good. Let's go to our next caller. All right. Uh, let's go to our next caller, which I believe is Yogi. You're live on the air. Hello, my name is Yogi Millsap, and I am from Nashville, Tennessee. I am on Project Apex's team with Alex Z, and I, I know you can hear it in my voice. I'm excited. Um, one question I have, uh, will we find out who won the contest while we're in Las Vegas? Because I'm, I'm hoping that Alex is going to win that contest. <laughs> Shannon, do you want to you uh, answer that? Yes. Yeah. We will be announcing the uh, affiliate and coach contest winners, and uh, we are super excited. 
I cannot tell you if Alex has won. <laughs> uh, no, you can't tell me. And hey, Shannon and John and uh, Jeremy, everyone, I'm so excited to meet you guys. We are very excited to meet you, too. Your energy is awesome. All the way to the top, top of the mountain, babe. Fantastic. We'll see you in a couple of days, Yogi. Thank you. We'll go to our next caller, which is uh, Tommy Lee. Just Red came, oh, just Tommy, you're on, live there. on the air. Tommy, you're live. Is she, is she going to come back? That sounds like Tommy's in a sidebar conversation. We'll go to our next caller, which is uh, Darwin. Darwin, you're live on the air. Hello. Yes, Darwin, you're live. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, Darwin, you're live. Uh, okay. Uh, I want to know where to get the where where how to get leads and where to get leads. Great question, Darwin. You're going to want to get through the steps. Sounds like you're brand new here. Get through the steps with your coach, and then you're going to be getting into traffic and marketing training. Also, one of the things that you're going to get, uh, assuming that you're participating with our core products, which are Base and Rise, you're going to get marketing training there. And also, at the event, assuming you're coming, you're going to get marketing training from some of our top earners live from stage. And, of course, assuming that you can log in to this very same line two days from now, we're going to be on the rise. We have that each Wednesday. Uh, this Wednesday, of course, we're not having it because we're all traveling and our hosts are coming in from around the world. But each Wednesday, Darwin, you can see uh, on the rise where we have live video training. Unlike this call, which is just audio, as most of our calls are, we have live video training each Wednesday night, except for this week, of course, because we're, we're traveling. You can also, Darwin, you can also go into your Digital Altitude members site, click on the TV uh, icon or the TV um, navigation yeah. bar there, and you'll find the, uh, the recordings of all the on the rise archived training calls in there for you. So okay, Darwin, TV check and out. navigation, right? Yeah, just uh, log into your Digital Altitude member site, look on the nav bar on top, find where it says TV, <clears throat> and underneath that you'll see all the uh, recordings of our rise training calls. Okay? Very good, Darwin. Okay, Thank you for uh, being here. Yep. Uh, one thing, can, can, uh, the volume is too low. Okay, turn up your uh, volume then would be my suggestion. Yeah, and this is Max. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, turn up your volume then, because we are. I'm looking at my my level meters right now, and they are cranked. Yes. We are okay, cranking those you. mics. We are crushing the mics right now. So uh, turn up your volume. Or, you know, get another headset or something. So Darwin, thank you for being okay, here. Thank you. Thank Great you question. See you soon. Let's go to our next caller. We're gonna have time for a couple more. Eight two eight area code. Eight two eight. Who's that? Uh, Luigi from North Carolina. Luigi. Yes. Luigi, uh, welcome. You're thinking? live on the air. One interesting thing that um, called my attention when I heard, when I heard Michael Forbes was that um, he had time to spend with his family, go on many places. So that was very appealing because in a normal job, you don't have time to do the kind of stuff like go on vacations and stuff. One thing that called my attention from um, the lady here right now was that she donated a lot of money to people that um, she consider, you know, a need. So that is also something that it brings to me that it's more just than making money to have in your pocket. It's the sense that, hey, I want to donate to others that don't have it, that it really calls my attention to your group. So how altitude makes this kind of dream come true. How, how do you focus on, we want to give you time to be free with your family. We're going to give you money so you can donate to all kinds of, you know, charities. How, how altitude would that that? Shannon, do you want to take that question or shall I? Um, I can take it and then you can add on. Uh, to it, you know, it, that is a great question, and I'm so glad that you jumped out here. Um, and I, I'll speak for for myself. Um, for me, I uh, created a vision of how I wanted my life to be, and I made a decision that that was how it was going to be. 
And then I uh, listened to people who had already achieved the success that I wanted. I duplicated what they were doing, and I put it to work. And the biggest hurdle that I had to overcome was the doubt and the confusion. Um, so the self-doubt and the little failures that would come along the way, and then the confusion that would come as I was learning stuff. So during those times, I would simply focus on what it was that I was getting to and that life that I envisioned for myself, and I wasn't willing to give up on that or walk away from it. Um, I wasn't willing to watch my husband suffer any longer. I wasn't willing to say no to charities. Um, you know, at the time that I got started, I was, uh, I was doing animal rescue, and the animal rescue groups needed a lot of money, and the only thing I was able to give them was effort, but I wanted to give money. Um, and so I just worked really, really hard. I worked harder than I had ever worked in my life, but mentally I had to keep my head straight and focus only on the outcome that I was working towards and not get stopped by the doubt and the fear and the worry and the stress and all of that, but just keep pushing through it and stay very close to leaders. Um, I was on calls every day. I listened to motivational stuff every day, and I just kept my head very straight and focused on where I was going. And since you had that focus, that the company promotes that kind of attitude, like a, our people, you should donate money to groups, you should donate money to whoever. Do you as a company promote that kind of attitude? There's other. Do you promote like a freedom to like, okay, leave your company and go to your family for a week and don't think about money or, you know, that four hour week type of book, you know, that uh, isn't one of the steps? Uh-huh. Did you, as a company, promote that kind of way of thinking? Um, yeah. I mean, Digital Altitude definitely promotes charitable works, um, 100%. And I think, you know, anybody that is um, striving and producing is has their own passions and charities that are near and dear to their heart that they contribute to. Um, mm -hmm. And then in terms of money, you know, my attitude about money is, is different. Um, than a lot of people's. A lot of people look at money as though it's like something you shouldn't think about or something is bad or whatever. To me, it's just a means of achieving the things I want to achieve in life. If I want to take a trip to Africa, then earning the money to do it, the money is the one that, money is what's going to pay for me to get to Africa, right? So it's just a means of exchange for the things that I want to do, experience, and accomplish in my life. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh-huh. Yeah, so the company definitely promotes charitable works. And then in terms of, like, how you live your lifestyle, I mean, I live a pretty awesome lifestyle. I work from home. My husband works from home. His office is, like, I don't know, what, John, 100 feet away from me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we are with our daughter all the time, and we're able to do cool things and, you know, take trips and basically do whatever we want to do when we want to do it. So just like Michael Ford's in, uh, videos, and the star videos kind of goes that point. So you kind of follow him the same way of, hey, I'm not a slave to my job. The job works for me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like your business is, pr is producing the income for you to create your lifestyle. That's it. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thanks, Luigi. Thank uh, great question. Appreciate you guys are uh, asking some pretty great questions here. Shannon, do we have time for a couple more before we wrap up? Um, sure. Okay, we're going to take a couple more. I do see we have uh, quite a few people in queue, so I know that we're not going to be able to get to everyone. Uh, nothing personal, just uh, we only have so much time tonight. And we do have our six-year-old daughter, who you guys will get to meet in, uh, in Vegas. She loves going to Vegas as well. So let's go next to... Uh, Paul, Paul, you're live on the air. Yeah, thanks, um, John and um, Sharon. Um, I, unfortunately, I won't be able to attend um, um, the 
issue in Vegas because I just um, joined recently and I'm, I'm from Lagos, Nigeria. I have a full-time job, and um, but I'm excited about being a part of this community. Um, coincidentally, John, you're actually my um, coach. Um, right? um, so but what I wanted to ask is, um, would, would I have the opportunity to have the um, um, access to the um, um, event in Vegas, maybe an audio version or a video version for those who, 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 who couldn't make it and then would, would plan to um, attend a future future events by um, Digital LTV. Yeah, yeah, Paul, I can tell you that uh, provisions are being made now for, for people who are, for whatever their, their cause is, are not going to be able to uh, participate live and in person. Stay tuned. We are going to be making an announcement uh, directly addressing that in the very near future. Oh. Thank you for bringing it up. Oh, okay. you're in Nigeria right now? Yep, yep, yep. Yes. Okay. Welcome yes. from Nigeria. Yes. Yeah, I think I see you on these calls from time to time. This is not your first time here, correct? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did not. Yeah, very good, Paul. Glad you're here, as always, and other Nigerians as well that we've seen uh, come here on the, the conference bridge. Glad you're here. And we'll take, um, let's see, I, one more. And I'm just going in order here from when people raise their hand, so we're not cherry-picking. Let's see who's next. Looks like uh, 516 is next. 516, who's this? Hi, hi. Um, my name is Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Where are you from? New York. All right. Um, I'm actually here with my sister, listening to you guys. Um, okay, so my question is, I'm fairly new. I actually started uh, literally 23 hours ago. Um, I'm making it through my uh, step one right now. Uh, but my question is, uh, you said that the tickets were sold out, so I'm wondering, like, what we could do with that. Like, is uh, there any way that we could go there or something? I don't know. Right. So, so sold out means they're, they're gone. They're gone. Now, I suppose you could hit your, uh, you know, the help button and hit the support desk and uh, see if there was any reserve for people who are in the business for 23 hours. I would do that quickly, though. Stephanie, because once you're in the business 24 hours, they're definitely not going to have any tickets. But maybe since it's only 23 hours, they might still have one for you. <laughs> but like I just said to our last caller, uh, naturally, as soon as they sell out, uh, a lot of people want them, right? So that's the uh, that's the thing. We're, we're looking at how provisions can be made for, for uh, latecomers, you know, people who are brand new. Um, but uh, yeah, I would, I would click on the, uh, the help desk and, and make your make your request known that you are looking to do whatever it takes uh, to get to the event. And uh, you're in New York, so you're local, right? You're just uh, right down the street on the other side of the uh, the country. So that's a lot closer than Nigeria. So you're considered yeah. a local. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well. right. Very good. Hey, Stephanie, thank you for jumping out here on your first call and making yourself known. Uh, great way to get started. Everybody, that's Stephanie from New York. You'll be hearing more from her. And uh, we are going to take one or two more, Stephanie. We're going to uh, go our, to our next caller, which is uh, 907 area code. Who's this? Uh, hi, my name is Angelo. I'm from Alaska. Angelo in Alaska. Welcome. All right. Um, yeah, I just got one quick question. Um, yeah, I'm just like the last caller. I'm on my step one also. Um, and I was just curious, do you, and within these 12 steps, um, I'm actually going to be going into a separate business for myself for probably in the next couple of years. And I'm wondering if these 12 steps in this program or this program can be incorporated with a personal business, I'm sure. I can tell you absolutely yes, but Shannon, I'd love for you to take this question because you and I have been successful in multiple enterprises throughout the years. And how do we do that? We learn some stuff about marketing and personal development, et cetera, exactly what is the purpose uh, here inside Digital Aptitude? So would you like to address Angela a little bit on uh, the transferability of ability itself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so everything you're going to learn here from the online marketing to the business development to even the, the financial stuff that you're going to be getting is definitely going to apply to any business that you're going to start. And as John said, we've started many different businesses and have launched successfully and currently have several different businesses that we have just applied the principles we learned um, through curriculum such as this 
to grow. And the cool thing about it, you know, I don't have a business degree um, or anything like that, but when you're learning from Digital Altitude, you're learning real-time right now education. So it's what's working now. And the number one cause of why most businesses fail is a lack of effective marketing. So getting this training will help you grow and develop pretty much any business that you want to do. Okay, I, I get it. Um, yeah. Yeah, cause, yeah, because be, like because of my geographical because of my geographical location over here. I, um, that's why I'm wanting to get into my business here because I can already see it being successful without even starting it. Because um, uh, everybody over here uh, owns firearms, everybody goes hunting and everything, everything over here. So. Do you live uh, in Utah? No, I live in Alaska. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so I'm like where I live. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm. So I'm pretty much gonna. I'm. I'm pretty much targeting um, firearm owners. I'll be doing maintenance and all that stuff. So. Oh, great. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I really want to give this a try and then um, probably um, do both at the same time if I could. Yeah, yeah you absolutely but, uh, can. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Angel, it's great, uh, great uh, question. And with that, we're going to have to wrap up Q&A. So let me do that. Hold on one second. Hmm. All right. Shannon. What a pleasure having you come out here tonight. Any closing comments from you? Are you excited about this event? Are you just faking it, or are you really excited? That is such a funny question. Convince, <laughs> me. Convince me. Remember that movie? Um, uh, of course you do. The uh, movie Yes Man, where <laughs> where Jim Carrey is like, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm okay. And then uh, the, the, the self-help guy is like, no. You know, convince me that you're you're being saved or whatever, and he shakes him by the shoulders. And <laughs> into the lap of the next guy. So yeah, I'm I'm really excited, Shannon. I'm really excited that you're going to be uh, participating, and uh, and and that we were able to share you here with everyone on the, the call tonight. And now people get to see uh, that you're you're on board and you're assisting with the um you know the event prep and all this. And uh, so yeah, again, any closing comments for you before we uh, all convene in Vegas? Um, I guess the, the last uh, closing comment that I want to make is just understand that pretty much anybody can be successful in this industry. So if you have a desire and you have a commitment and you have a willingness to learn and apply and you stay focused on what it is that you really want to accomplish, I know confidently that you can do it. So go to the event, get the training, apply it, and just rock with it. And then next event, who knows, we might be seeing you on stage. Yeah, I'll tell you what. We, Shannon and I went to our first event that she described to you earlier uh, back in 02. We, we walked in as newbies. We left as leaders. You know, next thing you know, here we are. It's, it does not have to take a long time. So, Shannon, thanks again for all you shared. Uh, today. I know so many people are looking forward to meeting you in person. Everyone, I'll be back here with you tomorrow morning for our Tuesday morning wake-up call. In the meantime, make it a great night because you absolutely deserve it, and we'll see you all real soon. Bye for now.